From the beginning and up till today, the DPRK's nuclear program has been marked by hostility from the United States, and it has nothing to do with Mexico. That is why I express great displeasure at the diplomatic measures taken by the Mexican government, which claims to have a sovereign foreign policy. That claim is without basis. Kim was given 72 hours to leave Mexico. Earlier on Friday, the Mexican foreign minister stressed that his country was not breaking diplomatic ties with the DPRK, but that it wanted to send a clear message of absolute rejection over the recent tests. While the United States is seeking to vote on the draft UN Security Council resolution on Monday, the South Korean military is closely monitoring North Korea for any further provocations marking the regime's founding anniversary, which is today. The regime has a track record for launching provocations on or around its key anniversaries. While South Korean and U.S. military authorities have not spotted signs of an imminent provocation, they noted the North could conduct a surprise missile launch from one of its transporter erector launchers. Another key date the South Korean military is keeping an eye on is October 10th, the founding anniversary of North Korea's ruling Workers' Party. To escalate. And now South Korean officials are warning that the rogue regime could test yet another ICBM as early as tomorrow. This uh, just days after North Korea reportedly moved an ICBM toward the west coast in the middle of the night. Joining me now, Commander J.D. Gordon, a former Pentagon spokesman. Commander, um, you know, this will be the Founders Day. North Korea known for wanting to put on a major display of military might. So it's not out of the question that they would do this. How do you see us responding? Charles, first of all, it's great to see you back on the air. From the whole Trump-Russia saga, I know what it means to be falsely accused. It's, it's not fun to be falsely accused. I'm great to, grateful to see you back on the air. For North Korea, I think that um, President Trump has it right. He's talked tough. He's, he said that uh, North Korea could be met with fire and fury. He's talked about possibly shooting down any missiles that are launched towards the United States, Guam, or Japan. That's the right approach. Well, Commander, we to I, I want to jump in because we don't have a lot of time. And I do want to ask, do you think ultimately it comes down to that? It does not seem that you can get uh, Kim Jong-un to do anything with, uh, without some f force here, violence. Yeah, exactly. I think President Trump is right when he says that Kim Jong-un only understands force. He understands pressure. So we've got to pressure the Chinese. We should be sanctioning their banks. I think uh, our delegation at the U.N. is doing a good job to yeah. uh, insist on this oil embargo. We've got to get tough with North Korea because it's not going to get any better. Yeah. Climatic wording and uh, now the direct wording, blank, uh, frank wording. Uh, for example, uh, previously, uh, Wang Yi said North Korea has to take uh, necessary consequences by their nuclear, uh, provocative nuclear and missile tests. The so-called necessary consequences uh, indirectly means the pressures and the sanctions. And this time, Wang Yi actually said the same meaning of the words, but with more direct way. So basically, China's way of thinking to deal with the uh, provocative challenges made by the nuclear missile of North Korea remain unchanged, say, uh, mainly focus on, as you said, uh, mainly of, uh, focusing on the uh, efforts for dialogues and negotiations, plus uh, necessary sanctions um, pressures. But uh, from the diplomatic wording to the frank wording really reflects some shifts, uh, shifting positions, say, China is getting tougher and tougher measures on North Korea, with North Korea's uh, more and more provocative, provoc uh, provocative practices of nuclear and the missile. Rick, do you see the same way that China is losing its patience? I think so. I think there are two differences that we've seen. One is this nu last nuclear test is the largest ever, uh, and it was, it was clearly an affront to the United Nations, to China, to the United States, to Russia. Uh, and all the other nations involved who had been trying to figure out a way out. Secondly, you have an issue of really health along the North Korean-Chinese border with all of the radiation that's going there with the, poten with, with the potential cost to China of dealing with either a health problem or refugees, even questions of relocation of people near the border. And I, I think that ch China is also trying to head off military action or calm down Donald Trump. And so 
Xi Jinping is trying to figure out a way to thread the needle, to, to get tough without causing complete disruption in North Korea. Thank you so much. Let me cross over to Professor Kim. Hello, Professor Kim. Yeah. Hello, Yang Yi. I'm afraid public opinions here deliver a mixed feeling in China. On the one hand, majority of the Chinese could understand very well the tough rhetoric from Foreign Minister Wang Yi saying we're going to consider a combination of both sanctions as well as negotiations. On the other hand, we are clearly aware of the deployment of yet another battery of that. You know what's going on. That's pretty nasty situation between the ROK and the China. So as a result, don't you think the diplomatic rhetoric from the Chinese foreign ministry has been somehow compromised due to your uh, single-handed deployment of THAAD, which is a missile shield program that might be viewed by the Chinese as a detrimental to an equilibrium of uh, strategic deterrence on our side, and indeed in the broad region of Northeast Asia. Okay, thanks very much. The first program is that the North Korea nuclear weapons developing and escalating the tensions program nowadays is very serious uh, around all uh, Korean Peninsula <coughs> uh, countries uh, concerned about that. First, the problem. The problem is concerned with uh, South Korea and North Korea. And the other problem is one of the Korean Peninsula problem. So the problem is more deeply concerned with China. So uh, China Prime Minister, uh, Foreign, Prime Minister uh, Foreign Minister said about uh, the problem dialogue and the sanctions uh, come going together because the problem is that cannot be solved by only sanctions. Looks like Putin uh, said just yesterday uh, he perhaps cannot uh, degree uh, about the sanctions in UN uh, because the problem is that China uh, has uh, uh, one of the border country uh, near the North Korea the place that uh, tested nuclear bombs. So uh, the more seriously concerned country is perhaps we can say China. So the problem, we know the China nuclear weapon, uh, they have their old history how to develop uh, the, the, the nuclear weapon and the missiles. Uh, but uh, he worried about that the North Korea there is their domestic situations. Perhaps their main aim is want to negotiate with United States. So this time we should going together with sanctions and the dialogue. And the other side in Korea, we are very uh, concerned about the problem of North Korea. But we have very uh, different situations because we have also good relationships with the uh, United States and also have now good economic and corporate cooperating uh, relations, uh, relationships with China. Yes, so I know. We, we, we know that uh, there is a very, uh, very strong relationship, which is, of course, an, uh, yeah, a yeah, yeah, treaty yeah. alliance between the DPR, uh, sorry, between the ROK and the United States. Uh, however, we have also noticed that President Moon Jae-in doesn't see eye to eye with his American counterpart on the use of force. Because the United States says over and over that the strategic patience is over. Let me come back to uh, talk to Mr. Yang and uh, Rick. Uh, do you think there is a serious divergence in opinion between President Trump and President Moon about military intervention? Because uh, President Moon says we would never ever allow yet another war to take place on the Korean Peninsula because <coughs> ROK would be the first to bear the brunt and will suffer the heaviest casualty were such hostilities to break out. Uh, yes, I do believe the divisions between Washington, uh, between President Trump and President Moon is really deep simply because of the 
different uh, situations. For South Korea, uh, actually mentioned, if war broke out, uh, a lot of uh, unpredictable suffers will be taken by South Korea what, rather than by the United States. So basically, uh, President Moon uh, really serious about uh, uh, what he said without allowance. And especially, legally speaking, uh, everyone knows uh, the ROK Constitution covers the whole peninsula. Mm -hmm. Just like a DPRK uh, uh, constitution co covers the whole peninsula either. The legally speaking, without uh, South Korea's ROK's agreement, any military action by U.S. on the land of the peninsula means the striking the territory or sovereignty of ROK. But I'm afraid the current, the current the Supreme Command is in the hands of the uh, United States. Uh, there was some debate, right, a few years ago as to who should uh, take charge of uh, the military use. Uh, but now it seems that the United States uh, would still control and command uh, the military presence there. I think that's pretty clear what you've seen with the development and deployment of that. The United States clearly was driving that. Uh, there is disagreement within South Korea. The United States just pushed it through. And I think that we're seeing a bigger divide in the past several weeks between Donald Trump and the South Korean administration than between Donald Trump and the Chinese government. And it's, it's not just of, the, of, of, uh, of possible military force, it's the issue of trade. I mean, this is, this is probably the worst time for the United States to say that the country might cancel the free trade agreement with South Korea. I mean, right now is not the time to be uh, to be driving a wedge into that relationship. Uh, it's really a time where you need the United States, South Korea, uh, China, and Japan to try to come together. For uh, Rick, something. I will get back to you uh, in a few minutes. Uh, let me go to Professor Watanabe for the response. In Japan, towards the nasty escalation of the tensions in the divided Korean Peninsula, Professor Watanabe, after all, for years, perhaps since the end of the Second World War, the U.S.-Japan Security Pact is said to be the only formidable force that would lay the groundwork, if not, uh, put the, would, if not serve as the cornerstone for the regional security <coughs> in Northeast Asia. Therefore, what do you think of the possibility that in case of extreme situations, the United States would first opt for a joint intervention with Japan, putting aside the concerns of South Korea, and would start the use of a military means. I, I mean, would that be one of the most viable options on the table at this defining moment about the future of this volatile region? Now we see uh, the world is changing so much. The first you see, option that Japan and some other countries around here should take is that hegemony of the uh, United States is disappearing. And everything must be solved or can be solved by the cooperation of the three major countries, United States, China, and Russia. So. If we look at only the North Korea, uh, this is not correctly understood. So, uh, and also, legally, of course, we have two countries in Korean Peninsula, but actually uh, there are some misunderstanding for both uh, <coughs> North Korea and South Korea. So uh, some people, like Chinese government or Chinese people, must help the uh, North Korean understanding of the world. But to answer to your question, if the United States decide to attack physically on the N North Korea, Japan cannot do anything directly, but Japan is helping a lot from behind. But I'm sure that this cannot be happening in the near future because the United States also, China and Russia, all of these major countries, they don't want to have the battles, physical battles, in the Korean Peninsula. 
So Japan is under the control of the United States. However, United States does go directly into North Korea. So this is my understanding, and also this is analysis of the media experts and the, the scientists here in Japan. Only the Abe administration, or Abe himself, he is saying that we are brave enough to do anything together with the colleagues of the United States and other peace-loving nations. Thank you so this, much. This, Given this the very nasty mistrust between the ROK and Japan over the issue of the history and some pockets of territory in Northeast Asia, <coughs> the United States has put the two allies under its uh, security umbrella, Rick. That's right. Uh, my point is why the two allies uh, delivered very different responses in the wake of the ignition of the nuclear bomb this time around. Japan, Prime Minister Abe, has made the policy offer to evacuate massively Japanese nationals from the Aru. And that gave a very clear signal that a major war were to break out. But on the other hand, President Moon Jae-in said very clearly, no, we would have a zero tolerance for any use of force to solve the issue of nuclear tests. So what do you think of the entirely different responses from the two allies? Well, it gets complicated. I think that one thing that you see is, first, Japan is not in the first line of fire. I mean, it's Seoul that would be wiped out uh, if, if a war erupts, and not Tokyo. So it's, it, Japan can be a little bit more militaristic. The second thing is, let's look at J Japanese domestic politics. And Prime Minister Abe is a militarist in terms of the overall philosophy, and he wants to change the Constitution. This could be another step toward that. Uh, and to say nothing uh, of the uh, setbacks in the local elections, uh, the LDP wants to win back the seats, right? right? I mean, I, I do, I, exactly. I, I think that uh, Prime Minister Abe, like Prime Minister Netanyahu of Israel, are very conscious in their foreign policy decisions of domestic politics. And, I, and, and so I think you can't take that out of the equation for the way uh, Prime Minister Abe is acting. What, what do you think of uh, the uh, massive evacuation uh, proposal? Well, I think, firstly, uh, such a move is really um, exaggerated the possible consequences. They are playing a game uh, of Tokyo po by Tokyo politi politician. Mm -hmm. uh, even in Abe's mind, the probability of the war may be pretty low, but he pretend to uh, let the public know the probability is pretty high, so a need to have some ev evacuation. So why he doing that? He's doing that, I think, simply because he want to make use, uh, use of this uh, crisis as an uh, opportunity for his uh, own political agenda, mainly to uh, f uh, uh, escalating the uh, 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 revising of the constitution and uh, rebuild up their military capabilities, especially uh, try to implement, uh, implement the so-called collective security, a uh, right to sec uh, collective security. Let me go to our South Korean guest speaker for his comments on whether Mr. Kim Jong-un, leader of the DPRK, has been able to take hostage the weakness of the ROK official response. Because he knows very well that South Korea will be the first country, if not the only one, that will do whatever it can to prevent the use of military intervention under this extreme circumstance. And therefore, Mr. Kim of, ROK, uh, of the DPRK has been able to conduct either missile tests or nuclear tests over and over, regardless of whatever anger the United States or Japan or even China and the Russia could have. What do, you, what, what do you think of such extreme situations? Yeah, the problem we think about the, the main target of North Korea's strategy is against United States, not against South Korea. Although they already said that they can uh, attack South Korea, but their real uh, the aim uh, for this strategy 
after developing their nuclear bomb and missiles, and they have get the enough good position uh, to want to negotiate with the United States uh, for getting good benefits. So the problem is that we very worry about that. Uh, sometimes if we cannot join the uh, talking table, uh, negotiation table together, perhaps Korean uh, will be a loser. Uh, so we want so to... So Professor Kim, my next that. question, excuse me for breaking in, Professor yeah. Kim, do you foresee yeah. endless missile and nuclear tests because of the alleged weakness of uh, your presidency? And Mr. Kim of the DPRK knows this clearly, that ROK would always be the first to blink in the standoff. He knows this very well, and therefore he would continue whatever. Yeah, I know. You agree, because, right? Uh, we want to do... He's yeah, been yeah, able agree, to take advantage we of your weakness, quote-unquote. And therefore, you have to accept yes. the DPRK as a nuclear-armed country, eventually. W will that be the point? Oh, but, but our point is some different. We, we don't want to... Uh, North Korea also have a uh, nuclear weapon. So we want to give big sanctions uh, the, to North Korea and want to they uh, come out and negotiate with our country. But I'm afraid uh, your therapy, I'm afraid your therapy or pro policy approach would either be utopian or be viewed as pretty weak. What do you think of our concerns? Yeah, we, we know we have a uh, bad point nowadays, but uh, today our government also said about that. We cannot make any announcement about employment side and against North Korea problem because we have surrounded by so many countries, uh, China, Russia, North Korea, and the United States. So one, our thinking, if announced to the public, we have big problems because there is also a different problem in domestic politics. So. Uh, they said we wanted to solve the North Korea nuclear weapon program, but uh, it cannot solve by ourselves. We should uh, keep the alliance with the United States and also want to good relationships and uh, uh, working together with China. But we cannot say bad details because the problem, uh, but case by case, we can say to the United States and also case, say to China and some things uh, to North Korea. Thank you so it's much, very uh, hard Mr. Yang. Times in Korea. Mm -hmm. Mr. Yang, it seems more and more Chinese start to show their serious concerns about the devastating consequences of whatever nuclear fallout because uh, some of the sites of the nuclear facilities in the DPRK mm -hmm. are so close to the three northern provinces of China. The level of radiation is said to be rising according to some of the surveys by our scientists. So what do you think of the Chinese concerns? This time around, uh, we were one step short of saying we would cut off completely our oil supply to the DPRK. Um, uh, and according to Western media reports, mm -hmm. China is 80%, if not 90%, of the DPRK foreign trade. If we were able to cut off all the oil supply, of course we would lose, lose completely all the diplomatic leverage. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's what the United States wants to see. Yep. They would see this as the most effective, most lethal sanctions against the DPRK, because under this extreme circumstance, the DPRK would be completely isolated, and therefore their financial means to support more of the missile and nuclear tests would be strained. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, actually, you are touching a very complicated issue facing China for a long time, not, uh, not only now. Uh, basically, uh, f uh, I would say oil supply, unlike the other exchanges between the North Korea and the China, oil supply is a really fundamental item to North Korea. And uh, oil and its uh, related productive uh, pr products are uh, dual use goods and either go to civilian uses or military uses, but uh, mainly not Don't forget the DPRK has always uh, upheld the principle of a military first. So uh, yeah, it's almost certain yeah. 
that all of our oil supply would go to the military. Well, and the, man the maneuvers of the military would be guaranteed under this principle of Pyongyang. Uh, yes, uh, I, I, I do agree with your point. But however, with their expansion of economic activities uh, in recent years, their, uh, the oil supply uh, flow more and more to the civilian uses. Uh, so basically, it's a really com complicated question to China, say, if we cut off completely the oil supply, the consequences will be quite mixed. Uh, yes, you're right. The military activities will be sharply shrink. However, the civilian activities, like uh, economic uh, activities on the market, will be uh, sharp. You, you and that will produce a, uh, uh, some unpredictable humanitarian problems, even not humanitarian uh, crisis. Your answer takes me back to the years of uh, Kofi Annan, when the American initiative, or an initiative coming from uh, one of the parties, suggested uh, the oil for food supply, uh, oil for food humanitarian assistance for the Saddam Hussein regime. And Kofi Annan did have a hard time to persuade the American media, well, he's not involved in the corruption scandal. What do you think of, uh, say, the humanitarian crisis that's more likely to be generated as a result of China's uh, embargo, I mean, a thorough and complete suspension of oil supply to our neighboring country of the DPRK? Well, I think that would be the first test of whether you would have a humanitarian crisis. I, I, I assume you understand my understatement in the question. Yes. We don't want to see civilian casualties. Right. Well, the, the difference between oil and medicine, the difference between oil and food is significant. Uh, th this would be a way to in inflict a lot of pain on the government of North Korea with modest pain on average people. If you started that with medicine, if you started that with, with food products, that would uh, it unquestionably lead to consequences uh, such as, as famine and dislocation. My last question goes to Prabhi. Hello. Hello. As part of the package yes. of President Trump to punish the DPRK over the ignition or detonation of the latest nuclear bomb, he said that the United States is ready to provide its two allies in Northeast Asia with more sophisticated weapons. What does that mean for Japan? Do you actually need such weaponry? Or do you think this is more of a, a show, a political theater? Uh, in case of the United States policies, uh, there is one characteristic that someone says very extreme opinion, strong, sharp opinion, the other person then, after that, says very soft, very, you see, calm, down, you see, opinions. And so, uh, which way do you want? They want to ask. So in case of the North Korea, the President Trump says something, then the secretaries say something different. But in case of Japan, uh, Mr. Abe, his supporting rate is getting down and down. So he is puzzled. He asked Mr. Putin recently that Putin can agree with Japan because of the economic reasons. But Putin, you see, rejected. Like this, Mr. Abe is put into difficulty. He, he, what he does is to get the support of the people by making the all the situations very extremely tensioned. So this is the, the uh, Abe is doing. So uh, we must understand that the tension or uh, physical strength or attacks cannot you see, uh, solve anything. So persuasion and dialogues and negotiations, theoretical ones from the China, Russia and the United States. Thank you so much. So, uh